London, the largest city in the European Union and a major business and tourist destination. Despite a human population of more than 8 million inhabitants, many animal and plant species have found a home in this capital city, in the more natural environment, as well as the most unexpected of places. Richmond Park, the largest royal park in London, famous for its flourishing population of deer. The park is home to around 630 individuals that are mostly found in herds. These herds are made up of two species of deer, the red deer and the fallow deer. During the mating season, males often fight one another in order to establish mates. These fights are rarely fatal, yet losing may mean no mate or territory. Richmond Park was originally intended as a royal hunting ground, which is why the deer were introduced in 1529. Nowadays they are no longer hunted, and are important for the park to maintain the grassland habitats. They do this by eating young seedlings, which would otherwise turn into larger trees. The males of both species have antlers that are shed in spring. Male red deers can have antlers of up to one and a half meters long. These eventually regrow until they are fully developed in autumn, when they are used to fight. Both species are threatened by hunting and the loss of habitat, which is why London is becoming more and more important as a refuge. As a result, smaller trees must be protected. Yet the deer have no predators, and there are not enough resources to maintain an uncontrolled population. The deer are culled twice annually, once in February and once in November. Visitors of the park are asked not to take home acorns, conkers or chestnuts, as these make up a vital part of the animal's diets. The deer share their home with a number of bird species, such as crows and songbirds. The park also has a large variety of grasses. Perhaps the most famous example of London's wildlife is the red fox. Unlike the deer, this species can be found in almost all areas of London. Foxes are common in urban areas and are known to eat almost anything. In the wild, foxes usually eat insects, small mammals and fruit. Yet in urban areas, they also often eat rubbish. London is home to around 10,000 foxes. Rural foxes can have territories of up to 50 kilometers squared. However, in London, there are around 6 foxes per square kilometer. These animals are not very shy and often use the same streets as humans. Males fight for mates in the early spring. Both parents, and sometimes also older siblings, look after pups in a den. These dens often once belonged to other animals, but were taken by foxes. Foxes are solitary animals that are most active at dusk, during the night, and at dawn. Private gardens are also home to another common species, the grey squirrel. It was introduced from North America and is famous for eliminating the population of native red squirrels. The grey squirrels carried squirrel pox, a disease fatal for red squirrels. Both genders look alike and females are competed for by males. A female often gives birth to two litters per year, each composing of two to four young. She then looks after them by herself in both a den and a nest in the trees. This species mainly eats nuts, buds and flowers, although sometimes they also eat insects or other small animals. Often they bury their food underground. They usually live in large woodland habitats with a lot of vegetation and have had to adapt to smaller areas. The species' main form of protection is their ability to climb. Interestingly, they often use body language for communication. Grey squirrels positively affect their natural surroundings as they spread seeds, provide a home for a number of small invertebrates such as ticks, and are eaten by larger predators. 
Yet the red squirrel would also be capable of these, and many conservation groups are attempting to reintroduce the species. Another introduced animal is the parakeet. This specific species, the ring-necked parakeet, is the only wild parrot in Britain. They were once kept as pets but escaped and now live in tree holes. Their diet consists of berries, fruit, nuts and seeds, and they are often found in large flocks. Surprisingly, one third of London's area is open or green space. The city is home to a large diversity of waterfowl, found mostly in the royal parks. Not all of these species are native. Some have been introduced from other continents. One such example are Canada geese, a large bird usually found near water. They are native to North America, although they have been introduced to Western Europe. The geese are commonly found in man-made and urban locations, often in large flocks. In North America, most individuals of the species migrate twice annually. The population in London does not feel the need for this, as they are fed all year round. The female birds are smaller than male birds. Their diet consists mostly of grass and aquatic plants, although they may also eat human-made food, such as corn. The geese's wingspan can exceed one and a half meters, which males use along with their beaks in fights for females. Pairs will mate in spring and lay around five eggs per year. During this time it is the female's job to incubate the eggs and build a nest, whilst the male defends their territory. Once the eggs have hatched, it is up to both parents to look after their goslings. Canada geese are important for the ecosystems in the parks, as they spread the seeds of the plants they eat. They are also helpful for the city's economy, as they create a tourist attraction. Although they are not threatened on a global scale, London's Canada geese are threatened by reduced habitat, methiocarb, a chemical put on grass to stop the birds from grazing, which is not fatal, however will reduce their food supplies, and other more fatal chemicals such as insecticides. Keepers of the park have recognized these threats and are protecting the species as well as others facing similar problems. One example of this is the forbidding of human visitors on the islands, which are a popular nesting site for waterfowl. Similar threats are faced by other species of geese, such as the grey lag goose, identifiable by its orange beak. Unlike Canada goose, these birds are native to the UK and can be found in London all year round. The species is aggressive during nesting time, but are usually found in large flocks, often with other geese. It is the male goose who stays with the goslings, unlike with most species of waterfowl. Another introduced goose species found in London is the Egyptian goose. They are native to Africa, however were kept captive in the UK. They now live in the wild along with other species of geese. The birds pose threats to other native species as they are aggressive when defending their territory. Three different kinds of swans inhabit the ponds and lakes of London. The mute swan, Buick swan and whooper swan. The most common is the mute swan, found all year round. It differs from the other two species because of its red beak and its size, this species being the largest. Mute swans were once threatened by lead poisoning in the rivers. However, these threats were recognized and the selling of lead fishing weights was banned. 
Juvenile birds are grey in colour and stay with their parents until they are 12 months old. Mainland European swans may spend harsh winters in London, making the city a refuge even for birds from other countries. The swans are omnivores as they eat aquatic plants as well as fish, frogs and insects. In the wild, families have territories as large as 10 acres. Urban areas are more crowded and the birds have had to adapt to smaller territories. The other two swan species found in London differ from the mute swan mainly because of their yellow beaks. The whooper swan is the larger of the two and spends only the winter in London, from November through to March. In the spring they migrate to Iceland where they spend the summer. The third species, the Buick swan, can be found in London only throughout January. Not only waterfowl can be found in the ponds of London, seabirds such as gulls also inhabit these waters. As the name suggests, the black-headed gull has a black head, at least throughout the summer months. During the winter, it turns white. Another bird also lives at the ponds of Regent's Park, the grey heron. The bird has a very long neck, which it uses to catch fish. Herons can be found in London throughout the whole year. They share their home with a number of ducks. In such a crowded area, wildlife tries to find a home in unimaginary places. This particular spider has decided to make an oyster card reader its home. Apart from fauna, London also has a large diversity of flora. This includes the many trees found throughout the city. They reduce the levels of carbon dioxide in the air and provide a home for many other species. Fungi is needed to recycle nutrients and as a source of food for many animals. It often grows on dead or living wood. Flowering plants can also be found in London, fulfilling similar jobs. Yet London's wildlife is declining. The green spaces are shrinking significantly every year and human intervention has caused other problems too. Many animals no longer rely on their natural diets as instead they eat only food given to them by humans. This food is usually high in carbohydrates and the animals do not receive a balanced diet as they would if they consumed their natural food. Some areas have been turned into wildlife protection sites, such as this one located near a train station. The London Wildlife Trust is a charity that protects the wildlife and the green spaces in the city. They do this through campaigning, education, land management and the raising of awareness. They own a number of nature reserves such as Camley Street Natural Park located near King's Cross Station. The reserve is managed mainly by volunteers. The charity aims to further protect green spaces by conserving the biodiversity teaching Londoners about the benefits of local green spaces, connecting as many green spaces as possible and increasing sustainability.